GFOS. What's GFOS? When I was a kid, I remember my parents would always ask me. Goodwood. Festival. Speed. Right, that's where we're going to. If you could only have one thing each year, would you rather have your birthday or go to Goodwood? <laughs> I think you know the answer. Spanning nearly 12,000 acres, the Goodwood Estate in West Sussex transforms every few months into the epicentre of English motoring culture. 200,000 people from around the globe make the pilgrimage each year to witness the most prestigious brands and decorated drivers in the flesh. Why? To celebrate the tireless and perpetual pursuit of how to make transportation go faster and faster and faster. Our journey doesn't begin with the biggest names or fastest cars, however. Instead, some remarkable individuals that make these unique events all possible. Those that often go unnoticed for their hard work. Yeah, hi, my name's Kai Beard. I've been marshalling for eight years here at Goodwood. I do festival speed, members meeting and revival. I think many of us walk many miles in a day, but we thoroughly enjoy it. It's obviously has built itself to be a global event on the three main events that they run every year. And to be a part of that, I was saying to somebody yesterday, it's, it's something that probably even Walt Disney can't create. You know, this is unique and it's looked at from around the world. People try and replicate it, but nobody ever really gets quite what you have here. My name's Archie Wood. I've been marshalling for about six years now, since uh, 2018, 2019. Even us, you have behind the scenes access, can tell how much extra effort has been put in. There's been a couple of times as well as marshals and as uh, some shirts, you know, you have um, proper F1 stars, you, you know, turn up here and they just say, right, you need to walk them down through the paddock, make sure the crowds don't get too much. And, you know, just walking with them, having a chat. It's just, it's, it's a great environment to be in, especially Goodwood. It feels very friendly and very you don't have to worry about any of the, you know, stigma or media or stuff like that. It is very focused on the racing. My name's David Alexander. Uh, this is a Lotus Elite. Uh, I was at Brands Hatch two weeks ago, um, was hit from behind and sent into the pit wall. So in the last fortnight, we've taken everything that we can off that car and uh, put it on this shell, a staggering amount. And this shell is a, it's still a racing car. It's, uh, so it's got my engine, my gearbox, my suspension, my seat, my dashboard. Roy Gillingham, who's standing behind me, he does all the work. And, you know, I make a mess of things and then he tidies them up. You have to obviously prepare the car, try and, you know, make sure that the car is reliable, obviously safe, and uh, it's going to get to the finish of the race. That's what we all hope for. It's been quite a bit of effort to uh, get the car done. I'm James Alexander. Uh, this is a Vauxhall Magnum, uh, part, used to be part of the DTV team. 
It competed in the 1977 Spa 24 hours, driven by Jerry Marshall and Peter Brock. We've still got the classic livery on it, as it was then. And my dad actually used to race, he races here every year, and he used to race with Jerry. So it's quite a nice thing that he, he knew the car, and now for me to race it is really special. To, to know that you're not only driving a, uh, an incredibly fast piece of machinery, but you're driving a piece of history, uh, and you're adding to that history, especially here at, at such a historic circuit, it's, it's special and it's brilliant to be part of it, really. I'm Jeremy Bailey, and uh, I own the lovely old Lotus Cortina behind us. Yeah, it's been a fantastic event, hasn't it? And one which, uh, you know, I think, I think it's first in living memory where people can remember a dedicated uh, Lotus Cortina race. I'm sure it won't be the last time it happens either because it's been uh, very well received by everybody. This has been widely acknowledged down here. This is probably the most original racing Lotus Cortina that's here. Uh, it was originally built in 1965 in Italy and has been a race car all its life. And uh, it's still on its original body shell. It, it takes a lot of time, actually. Uh, so you want to you know, go through and make sure it's all mechanically right. You know, the, the thing to do is you've got to finish, and uh, thankfully we did. The only problem we had was the, uh, the gear knob fell off, but that's the only mechanical issue that we had for, uh, for the whole time that we've been here. Even the new GTs, they're not the same. You want to know how to set the fastest lap? <laughs> My name is Olivier Galland, and uh, that's a Ford GT40 1965 model. So the one with the small engine and the small wheels. So it's a car that raced at Le Mans. And uh, it wasn't very, very successful in period because of a lack of development, I guess. But they were very successful later on. And they're a great fun to race in historics. You know, in historic racing, a lot of people race with, the, it's a family thing. So uh, I race with my father every now and then. Uh, you race with friends, so it's, uh, it's great fun. Well, that's a Corvette C5R from 1999 and this car did three races in its life. It did Sebring twice and Le Mans once, always with the factory. And it came third at Le Mans in 2000. It's amazing, you have all that torque, you have a big 7-litre Chevrolet V8, which sounds pretty much the same at, <laughs> at all revs. It's, it's amazing and there are cars that don't have any assistance, it's real driving. <laughs> I'm Remy, Remy Bourech. I'm the team manager and team owner as well. Uh, it's a family team. So basically I'm making sure that our technical staff is doing the proper job before and during the event. It's really nice, it's really beautiful. We've been entering uh, many nice events all over the world, but uh, it's the first time I saw such a nice uh, GT1 grid. So many top cars and, and side-by-sides, which is uh, quite specific to Goodwood. So the, the, the lineup is fantastic for, for everyone. I'm Jesse Billington, I'm the staff writer at Classic Car Weekly, so I'm the sort of dog's body that just gets sent off to events to do photos, talk to people and write about it all at the end, which sounds quite menial, but it does mean I get to go to things like this. A huge amount of it was this sort of goal of covering events, going off to things, and literally sitting down and talking to people and taking photographs and getting to just sort of stand on the grid as a Ford Galaxy 500 rolls towards you and sort of blips its engine to form a starting grid of the last race at the Samaria's Trophy. And there's a bit of your brain that goes, that'd be a cool thing to do. And eventually, after 97 different job applications, two years of applying, someone was dumb enough to say, yes, come be a journalist with us. And um, yeah, here I am, uh, not quite a year down the line of actually being a proper sort of go out and do it journalist, and I wouldn't change it for the world. It's it's a world apart, really. There is there is something magical about the way Goodwood can pull off an event. It just feels a bit more chaotic. It's a bit more open. You can literally walk up to drivers. You can walk up to mechanics, and you can just go up to the mechanics, the guys that are running these cars, and strike up a conversation and. It's, all, it's full of people that want to talk to you about cars, which is why Goodwood has this really sort of constant hubbub about it. It's people wanting to talk to other people, and that's nice. It's the huge community aspect that it drives, which I love. It's great. It's, it stirs up a sort of a drive to sort of go around and chatter with things, and you just sort of feel sort of 
buoyed by the whole experience and you never feel sort of tired from it, you don't feel exhausted. You go off to any number of the sort of smaller paddocks and get talking to the people that are running classic minis, that are running the capris, and they will t tell you about sort of rewelding floor pans, they'll tell you about suspension setups and the day to day sort of humdrum of it. They are driven and sort of really hooked into what they're doing and it is it is beautiful to get talking to them because that sort of idea of enthusiasm and passion for motorsport for classic motorsport and preservation of some skills that no one really does anymore um i became a proper journalist to use the phrase uh, last year so i did a festival of speed and revival last year and i don't know there's been a lot of, I want to say cool stories, but there's been moments that really sit with you. There's sun setting, you've got Spitfires taking off and doing acrobatics across the circuit, and you've got racing going on in the background. You can hear Ford GT40s roaring around the track and overhead the Merlin V12, and nothing comes close to that. You've got the sun setting, everything is bathed in this sort of warm orange glow, and there is no more beautiful a place I'd rather be at that point in time. I stood next to my editor, the two of us just sort of dumbstruck watching the whole thing going around you. And that's the beautiful thing is you can lose yourself in the event point you just sort of stand and a bit slack jaw just going, wow. And th that's what makes Goodwood Goodwood is the fact that it can just simply take your breath away. Extraordinary moments and memories for people like Jesse are everywhere you look at Goodwood. But none of this would have been possible without the imagination, spirit and determination of two bright individuals. I'm Rob Widows and I started the Festival of Speed with the Duke of Richmond in 1993. Well, he was Lord March then, but anyway. And then we did the revival in 98 and now the members meeting. Goodwood's always been really famous for horse racing. And there used to be the World Dressage Championships in Goodwood Park. And the Dressage Championships were struggling for sponsorship. So we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to bring racing cars back to Goodwood? Because the, cir the circuit here closed in 1966. So we thought it'd be wonderful to get it going again here at the circuit. But that proved too big a mountain to climb at the time. Whereas we were able to run cars in Goodwood Park. So that first year in 93, we had nearly 100 cars. We had a very small team. I mean, for example, Lord March, as he was then, was painting the, the pedestrian bridge at night in the rain, the night before the first Festival of Speed. He's up, up there with his paintbrush, pouring rain. It's a lot of work, and there were a lot of challenges, but the Duke of Richmond is very good at challenges, and he's very good at hard work. So together with a very small team, we, we put together basically the first festival was quite a simple event. The, I suppose the, the main challenge was getting the track as we wanted it. So there were various l layouts we could have used, but we decided to start down at the south end of the hotel, where the hotel is, the end of the park and go straight up past the house, very important to go past the house, great pictures, and on up the hill to the horse race course. 1.16 miles, very demanding track, narrow, bumpy. Uh, yeah, so, but these things come together. If you have enough people within, who make enough effort, with enough imagination, it, it comes together. The Festival of Speed is the flagship event for the estate, attracting over 200,000 fans, as well as drivers and brands from around the globe. It's the final day here at the Festival of Speed, one that celebrates 50 years of the BMW M division and 75 years of Ferrari. Attracting stars and cars, here are some highlights from what has been another glorious Goodwood weekend. Every time I get here, I just get excited about, you know, these motorbikes and the, seeing the old cars and there's just an incredible collection uh, of enthusiasm for, for the sport, uh, all kinds of branches of motorsport and it's just a phenomenal event. 
you know, I, I had a poster of Agostini on my wall uh, when I was a kid, and you know, I have, now I can say hello to Agostini. I mean, that for me is that's that's the magic of, of Goodwood. I absolutely love Goodwood. I mean, it's somewhere that I would put in my calendar, whether I'm working at it or not. You know, it's just a wonderful festival and there's something for everyone, whether you're a kid, whether you're old, the innovation lab. You know, it's really hard to put into words, but it is sort of like the best of Britain. This is such a fantastic event, generally Goodwood. It's got an atmosphere which is, you know, unique in the world, it really is. You can't just have it anywhere else. It's very rewarding. It gets a bit loud now, so that's the sound of good work. Uh, I'm just uh, in a, it's the dream world now for today, with all these legends here, with the old bikes uh, that I've grown watching on TV and, and some that I've never seen in my life before as well. So really, really amazed with the organization and, and the passion there is in here. You know, what a privilege to be here. Uh, first experience here and yeah, honestly, I've been watching it on TV for years. But you know, it doesn't quite do it justice when you see it like, you know, as packed as it is today. It, it, as a driver, it feels amazing seeing this many people. And especially when you pull out the assembly area for the first time and you see the grandstands and everything full. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. A fresh face at the four day long event is Electric Avenue, which started in 2021. There's a huge passion to, to go green, and we're really seeing that in terms of uh, the nation, in terms of customers, etc., and also performance, right? These EVs are absolutely turbocharging, right? They can go from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, right? Pretty impressive. If you look at the legislation in the UK, it really is driving forward to 2030 as a key. So our, our assessment of view is by 2030, 30 to 50% of all cars will be EV. By 2040, it'll be 70-90%, right? So a really exciting future, right? I think that really gives people a feeling of the future, the exciting vehicles that's coming to market. And I think it's kind of the first time that I have seen so many exciting vehicles together in one spot, and you can see all the people that are here. I think it's really exciting for them to see what the future brings. We actually walked around it yesterday and spent a good portion of time sort of looking around and seeing all the different types of electric cars, you know, some brands that I've sort of never heard of, and I think it's really good that Goodwood have, a, have really put a spotlight on, on the electric side of things. One of the highlights of the show is the Cartier style at Lux, a concourse competition featuring a range of million pound classics and sharp supercars. Fantastic because the thing about this specific concourse is that you know these people are not necessarily all super um, you know it, it, they don't know, know the cars inside out like some concourse so it's judged in a very different way it's about the feeling of the car and how they represent and you know they literally a lot of the aesthetics and, and from from my point of view from a photographer's point of view that's a really interesting way of looking at things. But you know they they all have their own special characters I think a lot of them are, the, are of their time. It's lovely to see the history of so many different cars here and sort of, yeah, be walked through history. To have 50 years of M here, you know, the whole show that BMW M puts together here at, at, at the Goodwood House is amazing. Uh, it's something that will stay in my memory forever. For me, it's, it's the first time in the Goodwood Festival. I've never been there before. So uh, I'm really enjoying it, uh, the whole experience. I mean, the atmosphere, I've never seen such an atmosphere. I see a lot of nice people here, people are very happy to see cars and, and, and hear some nice cars. And so it's just great to be, to be a part of this event. I love it. Oh, this is such a great honor for us. I mean, we are partnered up with BMW only for one year now. And to be already part of this huge, huge celebration, it's such a great honor for us and yeah, I mean the celebration moment here is amazing. The entire event is just unbelievable. It blew my mind. It's the first time for me and I'm basically lost for words. Just five years after the inauguration of the Festival of Speed, another unique event would be kick-started too. If I was to run through all the challenges of starting the revival, you'd be here all day. But it, it required a huge investment. We had to build new pits. We had to put safety, new safety barriers right around the whole circuit. It was a gigantic challenge because we had to get, we had to get a new planning permission for racing because it had closed in 66 and we're talking about starting the revival in 1998. 
So we, we had to really start again. I mean, we started thinking about it in 93, 4, so it took nearly five years before, before we were ready to roll. The build-up to it was such unbelievably hard work. There were, there were, it was complicated, it was demanding, and I guess, I guess the first revival in 98, the most momentous thing was that a Spitfire pilot flew a Spitfire down the main start-finish straight here at the height of the current pit roof, and that, was, that woke everybody up, that was pretty spectacular. The Friday morning when the cars went out to practice, it was just an unbelievably joyous moment, you know. You just thought, we did it. The revival is a time machine for many visitors, providing the chance to be sent back in time to a different era. Everyone grabs their flat caps and tweed suits, or bright dresses and flamboyant hats to be transported back to the stylish 60s. Yeah, it's stunning. I mean, if it's wet here, it's a little scary, so I'm glad it's dry. Um, no, a beautiful day today. It's fun to drive out there. It's nice to get some laps in. What an event this is. And, you know, it was, there's some really talented drivers out there from the world of Formula One, Formula E champions, touring car champions, and we're all just nose to tail doing as much as we can in whatever car we had. Yeah, it is special, and it's, um, it's an amazing place. Goodwood for me is, it feels like home, uh, especially after this year, breaking the Festa speed. I've got to feel like I've got an extra connection to it. Um, and uh, the Duke and his family put on such an amazing show. Um, the drivers keep coming back, the racing gets better, and, yeah, grows year on year. I feel that what um, they've managed to achieve here is a real intimacy which perhaps has been lacking in Formula One but I think we're getting better at now and it's that opportunity to get up close and personal with the cars and the racers and it's just obviously the most incredible setting where everyone gets fully involved and engaged with it and I don't know I feel, it, I feel like it's an extended motorsport family when you come here. I love it. It's my favorite weekend of the year, and uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. There's so many people. Everyone dresses up. It's just magical. You know, it's like a tri time travel machine. That uh, going back to, to yeah to those days. And for me, I'm lucky to drive the car. So yeah, I love it a lot. It's a, a sonic stimulation for me that I haven't really experienced before. I mean, just listening to the V8s and V12s and flat sixes like roaring away is like goosebump inducing. The names that attract year on year, uh, people I've grown up with, great friends, you know, so Jackie Stewart, I've known since I was a child. Uh, we had Jensen on the programme today, Dario Franchitti, Karun Chandel. It, it's just a wonderful, the St Mary's Trophy had such an incredible lineup. That's what Goodwood is all about. Jensen and Max are far from the only drivers that love coming to the three day event as many flock to the festival to drive the classical machinery on a fast and pure circuit. It was so much fun, mate. I mean, if you look down the, the list of drivers, yeah, pl plenty of good talent out there. And I've got all my family here, my father and my, my wife and my little daughter. It's, it's a good, fun, fun family weekend. Yeah. It's mega. Yeah, a lot, lot of people here, a lot of people. Um, and yeah, nice, nice to see everyone having a good time. No, good dude, it's always the best event you can imagine. It's, uh, it's why we are here each year. Even if I'm quite busy, I always said, I want to come here, you know, and uh, this is a cool, cool race. And tomorrow with the Cobra, it will be even better, you know, with a lot of fun always. So, yeah, we continue like that. We're still enjoying, so each year we'll be there. I mean, unbelievable, isn't it? Every single year we come here, it's just the vibe of this place. It's just something different. And uh, it's great to see so many people enjoying these cars and having such great fun. You know, the GT40 is iconic, it's great to be able to, to display it here at Goodwood and for, for people to, to hear and see it uh, on the edge. It's actually really well suited around here, it's very well balanced and you can see why the car was so good in period for 24 hour races. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lovely thing to drive. Mega, I mean it's just, it's like Disney World for adults, you know, the place is super cool, it's great to be part of it and, uh, you know, I've never seen so many people with big smiling faces as you do when you walk around, it's, it's fantastic. It's always wonderful to be at Goodwood, uh, especially at revival time. It's like going, it's like going back in time. It really is. It's uh, the most incredible event, and um, it's just it's a privilege that you get to get in these cars. It's an absolute privilege, and um, never take it for granted. Scott Dixon and I are um, 
Aaron, uh, an E-type, Gregor Fiskin was kind enough and mad enough to lend us his, uh, his E-type. So Scott's starting the race and um, I'll uh, finish if there's anything left. We did four driver changes, which I actually believe is more than we used to do for the Daytona 24 hours. So, um, you know, it's, it's about having fun, but it's about leaving nothing on the table as well. Yeah, it's amazing. It's uh, it's, a, it's a great experience. I think for me, you know, I've been here previously. I think 2015 was the last time. Uh, Schedule-wise, it's always tough to get here, unfortunately, with, you know, uh, seasons ending. But uh, super happy and glad that I'm driving a car for the first time. I'm just excited to, to get out there and, and honestly just want to get as many laps as possible. It's a great, uh, great event. I think we're very lucky with, uh, with uh, the conditions here. Some great cars, beautiful event. And, yeah, for me, first experience. Well, I'm not going to compare myself to the guys that you know come here every year because they're unbeatable. But you know, between the two of us, we have the same kind of experience with those cars. You know, so it's competition, but at the back of the grid. <laughs> and how nice is it to catch up with some old friends here as well? Uh, it's very good. I mean, it's one of the best events uh, we, we have, and you know, all year we're very lucky with the weather. And, uh, you know, we got all our friends, old and uh, young, uh, all being here this weekend. So it's, it's very nice. This is non-stop action for three days. I mean. I don't know quite how His Grace organises the weather every year to be so perfect. Um, it's just an amazing event, you know, with some of the most amazing cars, most amazing drivers and, and some of the best racing we see anywhere in the world. It's just so many people try and recreate stuff like this and he just manages to nail it every time. Everyone, you know, pretends they're here on a, on a jolly having a lovely time and, it, you know, everyone's friends. But as soon as that flag drops, the, the visors go down and the aggression comes out, you know. It's, we're, we're, we're racing these things as hard as we can and, and, and really enjoying it, you know. It's just a, an, an amazing place to be with some amazing cars and, and some great racing. I mean, there's nothing like it, really, you know. I mean, as an event, I don't think there is any event in the whole world that gets close to it. As an experience uh, for youngsters, for older people like myself, it's fantastic. And it's fantastic just to to be a spectator, you know, and, and sense the atmosphere that, uh, that you can, you can uh, feel from the competitors, from the spectators, from the marshals, from everyone that's working here. I just have, uh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. It's a first, it's a baptism of fire. It's my first time with a Jaguar E-Type, it's my first time in Goodwood. So I'm just looking forward for coming here more times. As wonderful as ever, I mean. I was here earlier, I went to look to the hairdressers and thought I might have a bit of booth on done, but um, it's just something. I was you know, walking around here this morning, it's just so magnificent. What an event, you know, the racing's almost secondary for some people, you know, they just soak it up. Glorious Goodwood. Just racing, obviously, the most important part. Racing's the most important, not having your hair done, racing. But it's just, you know, it's wonderful. Everything's sort of taking you back to the wonderful period when I came as a little kid to watch, you know, Jim Clark race. These classic machines fuel people's excitement, but away from the track, there's plenty more to see. Bands can be heard from almost every corner of the grounds, and each turn there's entertainment to enjoy along with countless stalls featuring theme merchandise. It's just such a joyous occasion. You kind of walk around out here, you forget it's 2022. You know, you're so in the moment. I think anyone looks for an excuse to get dressed up and have a good day out. And, you know, if uh, people want to see cars, there's cars. If people want to go over to the sort of crafts and the vintage stuff, the music, the jazz, there's a cinema. I mean, there really is everything i think in the past maybe you guys would have looked at cars and women would have gone to the sewing i hope it's the other way around now and the entertainment doesn't stop after the sun falls either the carnival grounds helping to illuminate the night sky Back to 2023, and it's an important year for Goodwood, with many anniversaries and celebrations taking place, meaning there's even more anticipation than normal, but also higher expectations. 
it's, it's very exciting. It's a big year for us. And I think many people didn't realize that there's been uh, motorsport at Goodwood for 75 years, because most people remember the first Festival of Speed onwards. But um, the Duke's grandfather started it in 1948. Anniversaries are always good, because, especially for us, because we can do lots of exciting things around anniversary dates. You know, our events this year are probably going to be even better than ever because we're just making that extra push. This is the Goodman Members Meeting in its 80th instalment, an exclusive annual event that kicks off the road and racing calendar at the estate as it reaches 75 years of motorsport. So Karun, it's great to see you here. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to be um, taking out on the track in a second and how's your day going so far? No, oh, it's lovely. I'm glad um, the Duke of Richmond has done his usual deal with the weather gods and turned the rain off. Um, yeah, no, it's lovely to be here. I'm going to be driving three different cars over the weekend. Um, I'm driving a Porsche 911 RSR uh, in a demo, the Brabham uh, BT52, which won the World Championship in 1983, and also uh, racing the Lotus Cortina. So yeah, it should be fun. Talk to us a little bit about the track. How does it compare to other circuits? Uh, it's very special because of the history of the place. You know, you have, it's an old school circuit. You haven't got much runoff. Um, you know, there's, it's a proper, um, proper old school track. Um, and it's a, it creates a challenge. You know, there's some slight elevation changes and camber changes, which make it interesting. But yeah, on the whole, a great circuit. The Porsche 911 demonstration, yep. 60 years of the 911. Yep. How special is it to be a part of that? Very special to be a part of it. And in fact, the 911 I'm driving is arguably the most important 911 in the, in the history, really, because it's the car that won the Targa Florio in 1973, the last ever World Championship status event for, for the Targa. Um, yeah, it's just a brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. It's not that different to the revival, really. I mean, these two events are just my, you know, most amazing events. I mean, it was the revival where I was dressed up and the spectators, but this is more of a, more of a, a members meeting. And my dad raced in the first and second members meetings in 1948 or something. So uh, it's very nostalgic for me to come here and be in the members meeting. And what's this circuit like to drive? Lovely. I enjoy it. It's fast flowing. It's the same circuit that my hero Jim Clark drove around in Sterling Moss and Mike Hawthorne. So. You know, I just love going to these tracks that, that are as they were, as it were, are as it were, where it were. That's complicated. Massive amount of energy, enthusiasm, and you know, great crowds. So you know, British public always turn out for Goodwood. I think I think they've all got their own uh, you know nuances in terms of being special. Members meeting for me is kind of like I know the revival was stepping back in time, but this really feels like stepping back in time from a racing perspective. It's got that real club atmosphere. So, you know, I like the members meeting. I think everybody loves to start the year off with this. It's great to see a load of old friends, current friends, people you've not seen in a long time. Um, but for me, yeah, I love the members meeting. You know, it's probably my favorite Goodwood event of them all. Um, you know, the atmosphere you get here, the cars, the great people, and the racing is fantastic. You know, it, it always is. Members meeting never fails to provide such a great close racing for us all. So. Yeah, I absolutely love it here. I was driving for a team back then called Tolbar Motorsport. Jim here was the photographer for the team and looked after us, didn't you? Um, and yeah, that's basically how we met and Jim's kept a close eye on me ever since, really. Spectators and those behind the wheel are assigned to one of four houses for the duration of the meeting and can earn points for their house from tasks ranging from racing on track all the way to tugs of war and axe throwing. It, what is good is the camaraderie and the involvement of everybody, including spectators, because every, everyone belongs to a house and contributes to score points. So it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's a cool team thing. And you said rightly, it's a friendly competition. We pull each other's leg. Um, we know that whoever wins or loses is not down to him, but it's, it's just a, a combination of uh, many, many factors. But I, I like it, I enjoy it. New to the members meeting this year is the Jim Clark Trophy, paying tribute to the late legendary race car driver and double F1 world champion, with a grid full of 30 Lotus Cortinas, piloted by some of the best race car drivers that Goodwood has to offer.
Yeah, the Cortina was a little challenging actually. Uh, Mark, the, the, the man that owns it, um, we were just discussing that yeah, we're not quite where we need to be with it, but uh, it's still good fun. And uh, knowing most of the drivers involved in the race, it's, um, it's serious business. There's a lot of uh, a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of um, a lot of egos and a lot of guys we've been racing against since uh, since we were kids, and we're all as bad as each other. We all say, oh, it's just for fun, and then you put us on the track, 32 Cortinas. It's um, I think it'll be fireworks. Oh, it's just great to see everybody out there on the same, uh, on, in the same machinery, isn't it? And uh, they're such great cars to drive, really approachable, easy cars to drive, so that's great fun. Um, but we, we've got to get the most out of the things, and it's going to be all about the driver lineups. We've got all Cortina grids, so it's going to be uh, 30 nutters strapped into 30 fast cars, and uh, and see what goes, uh, see what goes on. An absolute legend of the sport, you know, with, with some legendary cars. So it's a, it's a lovely thing to do. It's a great event. It's a great race to be part of, and of course, you know, Black as well. It makes it all the more special. One of the highlights of the members' meeting, as previously alluded to by Karun Chandok, was the Brabham BT52 demonstration the 1983 F1 championship winning car that infamously set the unofficial lap record around the circuit, doing so in under a minute. But enough of that, just listen to the thing. Sounded amazing. What was it like to be behind the wheel? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, these cars for me are like a childhood crush. You know, I just absolutely love them. I think they're the prettiest F1 cars ever. So to actually get an opportunity to drive the, the car that PK won the World Championship is unbelievable. But even more unbelievable is how good this car feels too when you go out on the track. So it, 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 you can see why it won a World Championship. It's just, it's just a stunning car to drive. I think for the fans to see two of these cars that we've never seen since 1983 on the track at the same time is pretty amazing. It's extraordinary. I mean, you know, to have the opportunity to drive a turbo era championship winning car on a great circuit like this, um, yeah, definitely leaving a smile on my face. And how special is it to drive around a circuit that it's, you know, set the infamous lap record as well? Uh, listen, uh, driving it anywhere is amazing, but a circuit like this, which um, I've come to know and love for over the years and to share the experience with David as well. You know, David was my teammate at Le Mans, so we've been friends for many years. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, the car car hasn't run for a, for a long time, so to come out and show it off and hopefully the fans enjoyed it. The members meeting is a chance to celebrate iconic cars and racing series. This year, Goodwood pays homage to the Porsche 911 as it reaches its 60th anniversary as well as commemorating the loud, fast and grizzly GT1 class. Now I could ramble on about their top speeds or how many wins each car recorded, but instead I'll let you sit back and enjoy what was a very surreal moment for everyone watching, myself included. That is so cool. As you well know, the world is changing incredibly fast, faster than we could ever have imagined. So there are challenges ahead, but we have to meet them because there'll always be an interest in historic cars and motor racing. It's not just going to suddenly stop, but it, of course it will have to adapt. 
Um, and this year's Festival of Speed, we're going to try and reprise all some of the, a lot of the great things we've done over the last 30 years. So yeah, it's it's a time for celebration. Um, I think it's a time to realize just what an important thing the Duke did back in, in the 90s by bringing it all back here. I, th I think none of us could have really imagined at the time just how wonderful and successful it would be. And it's just up to us to keep the standard up. <laughs> Whatever the next few years hold in store, one thing is certain. It will continue to inspire the next generation of petrol heads that are inspired by the sights and sounds of Goodwood, as it did the same for me many years ago. It, it's these, and the, it's these classic cars. I, I mean, I've I've always liked classic cars, and it, it's keeping and it's keeping classic racing alive. I'd actually like to drive around this track. That's my biggest ambition. There's some really good cars here, and they're, and they're all over the place. But also, um, uh, the Beast of Turin's really good. What's your favourite event out of the members' meeting, the Festival of Speed and Revival, and tell me why? Um, I think it's going to be the members' meeting. You get the, all the drivers um, uh, talking to you. All the drivers will talk to you, and and you and you can explore that, and you can explore. Everyone I've spoken to today has been very open to talk to me. I wouldn't be making this documentary, neither would I have the same passion for anything on two and four wheels if it wasn't for visiting these grounds as a kid and being able to meet my heroes. Um, busy. <laughs> Some of whom I was lucky enough to speak to now as an up and coming journalist. Something I dreamed of whilst walking around these grounds more than a decade earlier. It's great to see you here. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to be um, taking out on the track in a second and how's your day going so far? Oh, it's lovely. I'm glad um, the Duke of Richmond has done his usual deal with the weather gods and turned the rain off. Um... Okay, so day three at the Festival of Speed. I'm here with 1996 Special Bond Champion Damon Hill. There's been many amazing stories etched onto this tarmac at the motor circuit and the hill climb, and it's where I first fell in love with motorsport 14 years ago. Covering these three special events has rekindled that same love I grew when I came here as a kid, and I'm sure that will continue for many generations to come.